Okay, I did not know that I had that set for the music to just disappear. But anyhow, hi guys! <laughs> Uh, if we didn't start a stream with some kind of issue, it wouldn't be Debbie J's Crafting Corner. It wouldn't be Crafting with Debbie Live. Anyhow, let me get the chat over in front of me so I can see it and I can say hello. I do see that there are a few folks in here and a couple of you guys have said hello in the chat. We've got Ramona and Miss Cordelia. Welcome, welcome. Um... Anybody else that's in the chat, feel free to say hello. Um, tonight we're going to be playing with foil because I'm um, trying to remember, but on some recent live or premiere or something, I wound up talking about foiling and you guys were asking how to do it without your glimmer machine. Welcome, Miss Sophie. Thank you for dropping in, honey. So, um, you guys probably already know because you've seen a bunch of my videos that I love, love, love my glimmer machine. But there are a lot of ways that you can do foiling without having to use that. Um, the first way that I ever foiled anything, and the only reason I did is because a friend at work asked me, can you do this for me, was with a laminator. So this was, I don't know, 2017. I had never done it before. I was intimidated by foil. And she said, I am new. You know, she was a party planner. And it was like kind of her side gig. And she said, I want, I would love to have some, I think they were luminary covers made out of vellum. So she was wanting something like that. And it's like, Okay, yeah, I can do that. I mean, I'm one of those folks that I figure, yeah, I can figure out how to do anything. And it wound up being so, so super simple. Um, it is sometimes hard to do it on vellum, mostly because you got to get the heat right and that sort of thing. But I've always used a laminator and never had a problem. And I was also having to print to do it. And sometimes using a printer doesn't always do that well. So I'm going to just kind of drop down to my desk and let you guys see kind of what I've got set up so far. And I am going to look in the chat again. <laughs> so we've got um, Mary Landers has dropped in. Welcome, welcome, Miss Mary. Ramona says, I have foil and a laminator. Awesome, awesome. So a couple of years ago, I had made some printables and I don't remember if I left the link down below or not, but I do have a link to, I didn't, that's right, I did not, because I am actually making this available through my Discord, so let me put that link over in the chat, I have recently started a Discord, I'm trying to, a Discord server, that's kind of what they're called, and I'm wanting to make it kind of a go all place to let you guys know what's going on and I have found that it does let me know whenever anything's happening so if somebody posts in one of the servers that I'm following I get a little tweet thing in my ear I don't know what to call the sound but I get it in my ear and I know that it is my discord and I just check it when I feel like it I clear out my inbox constantly because a lot of the stuff is where I have not muted those channels yet but anyway that's something for later on that we can chat about uh, let me, let me find where I've got that. I know I've got it around here somewhere, but I want to make sure that I've got the link for you guys. Here is a link. I'm going to leave that over in the discord. So if you guys are interested in the digi for this, it's my problem is my printer. Yeah. I got a new printer this last year specifically for me to be able to do toner foiling and it still does not print the way I want it to and I've readjusted the settings I've looked at um, lots of videos including um, some folks that do primarily um, primarily foiling with their machine and done this settings the way that they say so I think it's actually a problem with my machine so I need to contact brother at some point but what I had come up with a couple of years ago and I made a couple of was um, some little flamingos. <clears throat> I don't do a lot of drawing or anything. This is something I think I got out my Wacom a couple of years ago and was goofing around with it. And I like the way the little flamingos turned out. So I made some digis with that. And if you guys want them, it's, it's entirely up to you. You guys can get them. But you can see my foiling, my um, printing is not really all that good on here. I have... I actually printed several trying to get it better. So the first ones were really, really bad. Here's the thing. The darker your foiling, I mean, the darker your toner, the better the foiling result you're going to get. 
So I went ahead and cut out a couple of things and I ran one through my um, laminator with some foil and it turned out fine. So we're going to see how this one works. I've got some other examples of some other things as to how you can do it. And if your toner printer prints better than mine, you will get better results than mine. So I've got one sheet that's it's basically this and I'm printing, I printed on Nina just because Nina is usually somewhat decent. And I'm cutting out the little pieces that I know should have a decent amount of foil. I'm using a carrier sheet, which I'm using um, parchment paper. Thank you, Miss Elizabeth, for suggesting that a while back. And it has worked for me perfectly in my laminator for foiling. And I've got some scraps to the side. So I'm just going to trim down a little bit of foil. And I'm going to just put that in my carrier sheet. You also want to brush off any kind of dust that might be on there on the underside of the foil and on your printed. And you'll want the shiny side up and then you can put it in your carrier sheet however you're using if you're using a mint a mink mink which i do not have it has its own carrier sheet okay let me get this out of the way and moving my mouse so that i can bring out this guy this is my Cronova laminator i got this one a couple of years ago i've done a few videos using it and i just turned off the heat Anyway, I've had it sitting off to the side for a little bit so that it gets nice and toasty. Um, which kind of Nina did you use? I just used um, 85 pound, I think it is, Nina Solar White. Um, the smoother the cardstock, the better the results. I have used Accent Opaque. I've used Nina. Um, I think I've even used Recollections and it didn't, sometimes I don't get as good a result and I've never known for sure whether it was the paper or if it was the printing. At this point in time, because my printer prints so bad, it's probably the printer. And I am really irritated because I bought this one, I'm pretty sure it was this year in 2022, specifically for foiling. And I really haven't, I haven't used it enough to really, it, it irritates me and then I don't use it. I mean, you know how it is, you get something and then it doesn't use, work exactly the way you want it to, so you get irritated. Anyway, I'm just gonna run this through my laminator here. And what happens is the heat is going to heat up the toner and the toner is the adhesive that holds onto your foil. So if you get that idea concept in your head, you can come up with all sorts of ways that you can make toner stick to your cardstock. If you can get a, a any kind of a tacky surface that's going to hold that, that foil on there, it's gonna work. And I'm gonna show you some of those today. <clears throat> And yes, I have to wait for this to go through. So that, yeah, it is what it is. Okay. So when you look at it, you should be able to see some wrinkles kind of in the shape of your design. Okay. Um, I have tried a couple of different things when it didn't come up really well. So let's see how that one looks. And this one looks like it did fine. Even though the printing isn't as good as I would like, that foiling turned out perfect. I don't see any kind of issues with it. So I've got two sentiments there, and then I can always use this on another piece of cardstock. Um, if you have, if you have fully, kind of like what I tried to do here, where you've got it fully black. This one isn't. This one is gray, which kind of sucks. <laughs> but if you've got some full toner sheets and you want to um, you can always use your waste foil on that and I do have some toner sheets that I have not gotten into um, I've had them for quite a while they are from Crafty Krita and because of shipping costs from Australia to here I I've been I've been hoarding this because I I don't want to use it all up and I've got a full box so I really need to go ahead and use it okay let me grab out another piece of foil I've also got different types of foil over here I've got some cheap foil that I have no idea where it came. That's not foil. That's cardstock. I have cheap foil that I have no idea where I got it from. And these, that's these, these sheets that you probably see me use quite a bit. 
I've got a bunch of different colors, so I think I got them off of Amazon or something, and I don't recall the brand. I know it was not Deco Foil, and it wasn't Blue Bonnet, and it was not Crafty Critter. So because I know that this is cheaper, some cheaper foil, I'm going to use that on one of my panels that I know is kind of messed up. I'm just trimming it down to fit the size of my panel, if I can get the AC to not mess with me so much. <laughs> yeah, the AC is blowing, so it's blowing my foil all over the place. Now let's try this again. Embossing and foiling are two of the issues with my AC because it likes to... I like that it blows on me and keeps me nice and cool, but I don't like that it tries to blow my product all over the place. And yes, I could be using my quick cutter, but you know what? I got so much stuff on my desk, I don't need one more thing on my desk. Okay. So Ramona says that she just submitted an order to Crafty Krita with a bundle and a discount code. And Okay, awesome. So you got a good deal over there. Yeah, I know that the... Um, the depend on every country has got a different exchange rate i used to work in finance so i actually i used to do wires for foreign currencies so yeah i had to do that a lot so and it's always changing so you never know for sure but yeah the exchange rate for australia has typically been pretty good so i'm going to remember to dust it off and brush off my foil and just add the foil down and I'm going to run this full piece on there. Now what I have noticed is that if I've tried to do say a full sheet like one of these, if I try to do a full sheet like this then I'm going to have issues. Hello Miss Rem um, hello, Miss Melissa. Welcome, welcome honey. How are you doing? So I'm going to go ahead and run that page through and we're going to see if that sheet turns out okay. And see, what I'm kind of doing is I'm creating a card or a couple using some of my stuff. So it's going to be in my stash for me to do later, but I think it's going to be kind of cool. Hello, Miss Cordelia again. <coughs> oh, I'd love to know what you guys are doing because I know y'all have been um have been busy with a lot of other stuff and I know I've been so busy I haven't even been on Facebook at all today. I've been recording and yeah, I'm recording. I've been recording a lot of stuff. And I just noticed that my focus is off. Let me see if I can get that fixed for you guys. It's not quite so blurry. And just to be on the safe side, since this is a bigger piece, I'm going to run it through a second time. Plus, there's not nearly enough toner on there, and I know it. Okay. Hello, Miss Gloria. Welcome, welcome, honey. Okay, hopefully that one is going to work out okay. And if you've got a printer that prints good dark, you know, does really good with dark, um, with toner, and it does need to be a laser printer because you do need the toner. If you've got one that prints nice and dark, you can use any font you want and make it say anything you want. So you can create your own sentiments to say whatever you want it to do. Okay, so I can see, just looking at it, that it is has adhered. have no idea what it adhered to or anything else, so let's see how that one looks. Okay, so it did adhere pretty decently, I think, and I can see my little flamingos on the waist, and this is so much waste on there and the lines are so small it probably isn't going to work that well now if you look at it it's i think the image is they it's got too fine of lines i think but that's still going to be an interesting background i'm also noticing that it's not a smooth foil 
you can you can see um, a bunch of little bits that are not quite as to me it looks a little sparkly and this is not a sparkly foil <laughs> welcome tumbling tangles and i love 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 your comment she says use it i've spent so many years saving beautiful things in my craft room that use it is now mantra awesome yes i get that totally okay i'm gonna try it now on this one that has got everything in the white using that same kind of cheapo foil like i said i don't really care as much if it doesn't do as well and i will be able to do more things on here i think that's going to be I can, I can use this regardless. Even if the foiling isn't perfect, you can still use it. I mean, how many times do we try to do things as a distress on purpose? If your foiling doesn't come out perfect, you know, just call it distressed. And nobody is going to know. Okay. But I'm showing you this one because this is an example of how pretty it can look even when it's not perfect because I'm going to show you some stuff that's going to look a little better. Okay. So, and again, if you're interested in my little flamingo, the, um, go over to my Discord. There is a link in the chat somewhere to get over into that so you can sign into the Discord. And I've got it in a new folder on there that is called... My new folder is called, and I just want to set that one up. Down at the bottom, there's a there's a category called resources, and I na I put a new um, piece in there called freebies and coupons. So you can go down there and get these digis. It's free. You know, just give them a try, see what you think. And um, I'm in Florida, so flamingos are a thing, right? I'm gonna run this through a second time. And close my Discord out so I can see. So Tumbling Tangle's name is Angela. She just recently changed her YouTube name to Master Instagram. Perfect. I just recently went over onto Twitch. And I think I've been on there for a bit, but I had another name that I've been using over there for, it's like my old email address or something. Anyway, I just recently changed my name over there to match everywhere else. So that's perfect. um great for die cutting yes 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 okay so this one is the one with the outlines of the flamingos and the reason i did the other one i just basically did it in reverse so i have no idea and I, what i did is i took this image shrunk it down which is the reason the lines are so fine on this on the um, pattern oh but i do like this look at that that turned out great. And this is even with crappy, yeah, with printing that was not perfect. So, yeah, it worked anyway. Okay, so that's one way you can do it is with, with where you have printed stuff out. And let me put this off to the side. So that is one way. And... I'm going to leave this stuff out because I think I am going to print out some, I'm going to do some more foiling. I mean, when you get start foiling, you just kind of use it all up, right? Keep going. Okay. So when I ordered things from Crafty Krita, they had sent me this nice little card that she did. Um, this one is all in foil and nice and pretty. And she says, enjoy, because she sent me some stuff. And she also included some foilables from their shop. Now, these are all sent to me from Crafty Krita. I'm pretty sure. Like I said, this stuff has been in my cabinet. Actually, it's in my cabinet right there, right over there. So I've had this within within reach for probably at least six months, and I haven't used it. So I think what I'm gonna I think this one would be pretty. Thinking of you would be nice. And since I'm playing with Crafty Krita, I should probably use. Crafty Krita Foil. I've only got a couple of them. One of them is Rainbow and one of them is Rainforest. And I think for that one, I'm going to use Rainbow. Again, these guys, they are kind of far away. I think I've only, I've used this probably once. That is really, really, really bad on my end. Um, making a net mess with my cough drops. Also, I can get this guy out.
Okay. And use what you got to cut it. It's like, it does, it's up to you how you want to do what you want to do to be able to cut everything and pretty much for everything, right? And of course I have a dull blade, so I'm not going to use that. So I'm going to go back to my scissors. And I can tell the difference between this and that other foil that I just used. This is thicker. The other is very, very fine and flyaway, but this Crafty Krita foil is a lot thicker. So I'm just telling you what I'm observing. I don't know if it makes a difference one way or the other. That is one of the things. That's something I think I need to learn something about, right? I'm going to go ahead and dust this off. And just looking at the print, I can tell it's very shiny where the, foil, where the um, toner is. So this is very heavily, it has a lot of toner on there. Let's just put it that way. I'm going to put it back in my carrier sheet and run that through my Crenova. Hello, Miss Lisa. And I do need to check on that chat. I know what is for what I didn't do. I am not showing the chat thing. Why am I not showing the chat thing? Where is it? Because I'm not showing that. That's part of it. Um, okay, so it looks like on this screen, I don't have all my stuff on, and I don't know why I don't have my stuff on. Here's the thing. I did have everything turned on, and then, of course, it doesn't want to work well when I get started. A couple of things I just tested are not wanting to work. Okay, so there's that. Might be working, might not be working. There's that. Well, where did it go? I do see Lisa um, waving, but the thing is, I'm wanting to know why my overlay is not working like it's supposed to. Well, let's see if one of my sound effects is working. That's working. That's good. But for some reason, this overlay thing is not working like it's supposed to be. Because I just realized that my little chat thing is not up like it's supposed to be. Did I not turn it on? I thought I had it on. Restream is being a pain, I think. Embed in stream. Oh, it's supposed to be working. There we go. Now you can see what each other is saying. It's popping up on the screen again. I like that. Okay, anywho. And my welcome thing's not working, so I don't know. It just is irritating. Well, let's take a look and see what this one looks like and see whether or not I need to run it through a second time. Uh, looks like it should be pretty good, so let's take a look. Okay, and I need to run it through again because for some reason it did not want to work completely correctly. I've got air bubbles, which probably means that this is not quite hot enough for what I'm trying to do. So let me run it through again. And it has been on for a bit. <clears throat> and I hadn't used these nice little things and I didn't want to mess them up. While that's going through, I'm going to take a look in this box. And this is a box of DIY foiling paper, a 50 count box of eight and a half by 11. And I have not touched it. I told you, I have not been using my stuff. Um, 
Oh, for some reason I thought it was toner paper. This looks like it is paper to foil onto, but I thought it was the black paper. So I'm going to have to look, yeah, I'm going to have to look up and see what that was because this is not what I thought it was, which means I probably, yes, I did, Miss Gloria. I did use my little brush. Now it's kind of where the, this is, like I was mentioning, this is thicker foil. The plastic carrier of the foil, I think, is thicker. So there are some places that it missed. So I sent it back through a second time and that helped, but there's still a couple of places that it missed. I'm going to see if I can line it up enough to at least get the right color in that area for a couple of places because it doesn't really look good. Okay, so the paper is to print my images on, and I can try that with my printer, but I'll be honest with you, I will probably never use that until I get my printer working better. I mean, I'm happy that this turned out as well as it did on Nina, but come on, this is not, this is not black. So my printer is, I have issues with my printer, and I've reset all the settings and done all the things, and it's not wanting to work right. So I think it's actually an issue with the machine. It could be the rollers. It could be the drum. It could be any of that thing. So anyway, yes, I and Tombow will work on it too. Absolutely. And I do have those glues off to the side as well. So let's see if that helped. Not really. But of course, I'm probably the only one that's going to notice that there's issues with it. I can go back. Well, I could go back over with it. Some of the purple. Purple and pink will go together, I think. So I'm just going to slide it again. And I have never had a problem with this machine doing foiling. But I've probably been using cheaper foil that sticks to everything. I've also, when I've had issues with my printed ones, used a heat gun to try to help to heat that toner back up. And these have been sitting in my closet for at least six months. My tech doesn't know what I think I should do. <laughs> yeah, Mary is right. She says, my tech doesn't know what I, what I think it should do either. Yeah, my tech is not one to do right. Possibly, but I have a feeling it's more heat than anything else. And now I'm, it feels like I'm just messing up the paper. This is some smooth paper and it looks like it gets dinged pretty easily too. Okay, that means I'm going to put that one to the side. I'm going to try again with another one. And I think these were just freebies that she sent in um, in my stuff. So here is some, this one's a nautical. And I do have Crafty Crita foil, but I've also got Blue Bonnet. And I kind of want this one to be in blue. Hello, Miss Elizabeth. <clears throat> and this is some thinner foil as well. So I have not used much of Crafty Critters. And don't, let me just double check. This is supposed to be, yeah, it is toner foil from Crafty Critter. I don't think I've had, and I don't think I've used any that was that, that thick before. I know that there's, they, that is textile foil, so it's designed to be able to be used on fabrics and leather and things like that, which is probably the reason it's so thick. So here is another one using, this one time I'm going to be using some blue bonnet. And just run that through my Cronova. And I keep putting it down onto some double-sided tape, which of course is making everything stick to it. That's not fun. Yeah, since I started doing the hot foiling, I haven't done nearly as much with my regular foil. <clears throat> 
So we've basically seen one way to do foiling so far. We've seen that you can do it with toner if you can get the toner to go down on your paper well enough. I get that part out of the way. The next way I want to do, I'm going to take out a piece of cardstock. And this time I'm going to use some double sided tape because you can use double sided tape to put foil down, which means you can create whatever kind of design you want. And I think I'm going to put these pieces of score tape. This is actually scrapbook.com. This is eighth inch, eighth inch. And I'm just messing around. I have no idea what I'm doing. And then this is some tape that is in the box of the month from Spellbinders, which means I got a lot of that stuff. And since this is green cardstock, I think I'm going to use some red foil because that would be kind of pretty. And I'm just going to burnish it down. And then I will trim off all of that excess. And these orange handle scissors are my sticky scissors. I try to use them primarily for when I am cutting anything with tape and stuff like this. And I have a garbage can right behind me. Oh no, Elizabeth. Well, at least we've got the chat up on the screen. Although I've got, it's so white there, it's probably hard to see. But thank you for dropping in, honey. And I'm trying to clean up my mess as I go because I hate leaving a mess everywhere. Sophie says she always forgets about the double-sided tape. I know. Like I said, anything that can give you a ta tacky surface will work. Of course, now I've got tape all over the place. Yes, yeah, she can't read it. I could turn on the audio one, so if you guys don't say too much, it won't drive you too crazy. But there is a way for me to have it where the um, the chat is audible, so that y'all can hear it. It's up to you if you want me to turn that on, though. Because if the chat gets real chatty, it can definitely mean that there's no room for anything else to be heard other than the chat bot <laughs> saying so and so said such and such get out your ma <laughs> get out your magnifying glass miss elizabeth that's what cordelia says <laughs> okay so I'm taking the release paper off of all of these And I'm going to use some red blue bonnet foil because I still have some. And I've got like a half of half of a panel. I don't have much of this stuff left. And I probably, yeah, I didn't do it quite wide enough, but that's okay. Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm fighting my AC, guys. Yes, you could definitely do, you could do rainbow like this. I'm kind of just thinking Christmas for the red and the green. 
and that I know is all wrinkled and I'm going to burnish it some. I'm not going to do too rough because when you do it too rough, yeah, the foil comes up, but it also winds up having a different texture than what you really want. And I probably have already done it a little bit too much. Yeah, and of course I got it on the other side. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. We'll do it. <laughs> you were th you were thinking the same thing but didn't type it fast enough yep so now we've got a kind of grungy not perfect background or start of a background for a card for christmas and anywhere that you have sticky it will stick And it looks like I pulled off some of the adhesives, but that's okay. So that's with the little tapes. But you can also use it with your big guys. I have over here adhesive sheets. So we're going to do the same thing this time with a big panel. That's, I don't want to use that one. That one is um, watercolor. That one's watercolor. Do I have any paper? I'm trying to clean up my desk and I've got a stack of cardstock over here. So for this one, I am going to, after I get this off my desk, that is driving me crazy. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to get that off right now. I need to put some alcohol down. But say you want some foil cardstock, but you don't have any, but you do have foil. You could use your double-sided adhesive sheets. Which I don't use very often either. You know, it kind of sucks when you know all the things, but then you don't use it to be able to actually get any use out of it. I've got all the stuff. Right, Elizabeth? We're both that bad. Okay, so for this one, I think I'm going to use some of the purple. Okay. And just like the tape, you just have to take up the release paper. And then you can add your foil. And since I need to cut the end anyway, I'm going to go just cut off this excess so I have a kind of a straight piece I can use. I'm just going to use this to add some purple on here. And yes, sometimes it does come up a little bit grungy, but you know what? That is totally fine too. Oops, because of the, um, because of the grungy? I don't mind the grungy. It really depends on what you're doing as to whether or not the grungy is going to look good or not. But everywhere that there is exposed adhesive, you can add more foil down. Now back to the one we did earlier. This one is those that nautical one. And I'm just looking at it to make sure I didn't get too many creases. There are some folds on here and I don't really like that. So I'm going to run it through again before pulling it off. And hopefully it won't have too bad. But it looks like there's going to be a couple of lines. And that's because the, the foil didn't stay straight as it was going through. And that's probably because this is an old piece of part of uh, parchment paper. I didn't even think about that before I got started. 
Okay, Gloria says, yeah, I have all the stuff too. However, when I want to use it, I can't find it. And when I stop looking for it, I find it. No, I don't. <laughs> oh, not I don't it. Okay, yeah, you find it. Absolutely, that happens to me all the time. What's funny is I've got, I keep this basically, my Cronova laminator stays on my desk. I've got a little shelf thing that Todd built for me a couple years back and I have it kind of laying down underneath this little, little shelf that holds all my monitors. But I, and that means I've got a nice size cubby under there, right? But I can't use the full depth because it's too deep. I've got a bin that has been sitting under there beside my Cronova, but I've got all the stuff in front of it that I need, need easier access for. I forgot about all the stuff that was in there. I mean, like this. I made this one when I was playing with the paints at one point. I never did show it to you guys, I don't think. It's a, um, it's a sublimated bookmark using a stamp that I used for my keychain a while back and some of the paint. So now I know how the paints do. They're really dark. But I, I mean, I hadn't, I forgot that that's where it was. Yeah, it looks like there's probably going to be that line there, but let's go ahead and take a look anyway. But other than those couple of little lines, that looks pretty good. So I'll be able to use that for a card. This one's going to be for a masculine card, and I'm going to have to figure out what do I have nautical that I can use that for. Okay. So we've got part of this one is in purple, and I decided I want to do the rest of it in green just because... And again, using some more of the blue bonnet foil, uh, which I'm almost out of. It's like, I'm, if this was a sample roll that she sent me a couple of years ago, and I have not used, I don't foil as much as I should. Yeah, oh, a mermaid. I also, I do have plenty of mermaids. I also have um, seahorses and stuff like that that I completely forgot about. So this is going to be more, to me, this looks like almost like the Joker too. So that's kind of cool. But I'm thinking Halloween-y. So just put that down on top of my double-sided adhesive. And I got an air bubble there. I'm going to try to get the bubbles out. And I'm going to try to just burnish it down with my finger because I think that's going to give me better result. Okay, I'm going to go back over it again. It's like it's kind of where some of the adhesive is not wanting to catch it. So I'm probably not burnishing it down enough. But I also know if I burnish down too much, it gives a kind of a funky texture. It just may be that that's what it's going to do. Sea, sea dragons and pirate ship. Okay, I'm going to have to fix that too. This thing is not one, I, I don't know what I did, but apparently I messed up something on some of my settings. So this one is green and purple, and that would be kind of cool. Thinking stripes, I don't know. Anyway, I've got a few of those done. Um, Let's see how much time, we've still got 15 minutes, so I might have time to do one more. Um, but this is one that is a method that I've tried out a few times that y'all had forgotten was a thing. And there's actually a couple of different ways to do it, and that is doing foiling with your stamps. And what I should have done is got that all done and ready to go ahead of time, but I kind of ran out of time. So the stamps I want to use, I've got a couple of ideas. I'm going to do it with this because it's smaller and it'll take less time, but you could do it with this one too. Basically anything that has got a solid image will do better. I have done it with line images before, but it wound up not, didn't take as good. Let's just put it that way. And I need a piece of cardstock. And I need my foil not to fly away. Yeah, all of that is watercolor. I thought I had white in here too, and I don't. That's okay. We can do it on some black. That'll be interesting. So 
Now there's a couple of ways to do it. One is with embossing, and that's actually the faster way, I think. So I think that's what I'm gonna do this time. We're gonna use some clear embossing powder. The other way is with transfer gel or transfer gel duo, and that one you have to wait for it to dry before you can try it. Okay, so I've got my WOW embossing stuff out. Yes, run it through a die cutter. I absolutely. Well, that's what I was thinking of when I thought that that pack of white paper to foil on was the black toner sheets, because I thought it was the black toner sheets. And since it's not, I can't do that. But um, what I was thinking of doing was foiling on that and then using some of my die cuts. That's what I get for not actually having used the stuff, right? And do I have it plugged in? I need to plug in my heat tool. Moved everything around on my desk so that I wouldn't have to deal with the cords going across in front of me. And now I need to plug things in in order to make them work. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp and emboss. And I'm not going to worry about using any um, anti-static powder on this one, just because... Okay, that, I probably need to put my powder on there quick, because that is going to be gone in a minute. Where's my thing? I'll just use this big one. It may or may not stick because that might have dried already. I'm not sure. Okay, good. It didn't. Okay, so you guys know embossing. So all I'm doing is embossing a couple of these little pumpkins on a piece of cardstock. I'm just using some clear embossing powder. Nothing special. It's not that super sticky, which I have tried and did not work very well. Um, so I'm just using that, okay? Nothing really special on that. And just heat it up. Now I'm going to grab some, some foil to go over the top of that. And scissors to cut that down. And then my carrier sheet, just like I did before. Actually, before I do that, let me just make sure that I don't have any flyaway embossing powder on there. And a lot of this type, it's really going to depend on your stamping. If you um, stamped too hard, if you overstamped it, you know, if you squished it too much, your image may not look as good, but that's the same as if you were using just regular, you know, you're just doing regular embossing with it, right? And the reason I'm using purple and not orange is I don't have any orange foil. I need to do it in gold. That would be cool. You know, I have tons of hot foil, but I'm not going to use my hot foil for toner foiling, mostly because hot foil foil is more expensive than toner foil is. And I don't want to, I mean, I could, if you really, really come down to it, you can use any type of foil on your items that are sticky enough to hold them. Okay. And that's what this is doing. What my laminator is doing is it is heating up that um, embossing powder, reheating it, so that the foil will stick to it. I'm gonna go ahead and run that through a second time just to be on the safe side. And that should be done in just a second. Oh, this is too funny. I forgot that I had done the test on this. Um, I've been testing a bunch of tech stuff and right now all, our chat is being copied over into the Discord. <laughs> I 
on the testing channel so i can always delete that at any point but yeah it's got all of the all of the um, chat messages are in there so that is kind of funny don't know if it's something that it was useful or not but that is actually kind of funny okay so it also has glue on the hot foil yes that is true the reason that hot foil works the way it does is that the heat when you send it through your um hot press melts the the adhesive that's on the hot foil okay so that worked fine so now we have a couple of little foil purple pumpkins and that is just from embossing powder most of us have got embossing stuff in our stash you don't need anything special to be able to do it and you could do this with all of your stamps so i think that is super cool no um i was putting it through my laminator this is this was just regular embossing so it was embossing powder so we needed the heat from the laminator to melt that embossing powder so that the foil would stick to it okay um still have a few minutes looking to see what did i not mention on this one because this is kind of just an overview of all the different things you can do um here's a couple of pens and not that one. Where did I do it? That uh, oh, this is one I want to play with. Now this is something I haven't done anything with because yeah, I got it as, as I was leaving Creativation back in March, April, whatever it was. They basically some of the some of the booths when they are breaking everything down and it's basically everything was broken down and put away sometimes they have a little extras that they want to just get rid of so someone i don't remember which booth it was they had this and they said you want it i said okay and this is some scrapbook scrapbook.com adhesive but is this the one that this is not the one i thought it was i thought this is the one that i got one that has little hearts now i don't know where i got this one from this is not the one i got from the event that's mono. Yes, I have too much stuff and I'm trying to use it, so that's why it's right by my desk. I know. This is the one I was thinking of. 15th anniversary, and I don't even see the company name on it. This is the one I was thinking of that does little hearts. Okay, I make sure I've got it right. That feels like it's in the right direction. Nope, must not be the right direction. Okay. Yeah, and those are all adhesive, so I can now put my foil on it. And now I have a little row of purple hearts on my cardstock yes the yellow one is a dot runner well i always have been using my dot liner adhesive which does lots of little dots and you can use it you can use this too it gives you a different type of a texture so let's say we want to use one of these i'll do one in that so there it has that pattern and i I don't remember when I got this one from scrapbook.com, but okay, they do have two different textures. So just to see it, let me use a color that you can actually see. I could use the foil, the rainbow. I think I'm going to use some of this blue, just some of the excess. Shay. Hey, Shay. So it's got some little dots. And then the one from my other dot liner adhesive. Don't have enough of this one, not to, and if I don't want to go into that, so I'm going to just use some of this one. And do that in the green from this rainbow. I'm actually thinking that would be kind of cool again with the whole nautical theme. This would be really, really cool, like from Mermaid. But the different types of adhesive are going to give you a different pattern. To be honest, this one has got like bigger pieces. I don't know if you guys can see it. 
Well, I can kind of see it. Okay, it's got, because of the texture of the adhesive that is on the, in the runner, it gives you a different kind of texture on your paper because of the little dots. For instance, the paper that, the adhesive that I know Elizabeth has been using a lot lately, that's the little, the dots, that's a full, a full sheet of just the little dots of adhesive, would work great for this. You can get an interesting texture with your foil. Hello, Miss Ellen. So we've got those different ways of doing it. Then we've got the Zig two-way glue pen. <laughs> Hi, Bethany. So you can also use a two-in-one pen to be able to do your your um your foiling too. And what's nice with this one is that you can see it. So this is it writes in blue. I've also got a couple of pens that are um, glue quill. Did not have really good results last time. I tried that, but I think it's just that the uh, glue had trouble coming out. And then there is the quickie glue pen. So we've got this little guy that you could do little accents, just like you do with your white gel pen or something. Um, or just write with it, if, assuming that this one's going to write. It does dry pretty quick, I think. Let me see if it's going to pull up any of that on those little guys. And these, it's hard to see it just because it's on black cardstock. I'm sorry, I thought I had some white cardstock over here and I didn't. But yeah, even with the, you can see those little guys there, the little dots. Those are ones that I use the quickie glue pen with, meaning you can write with it. This is almost dry, but since it's still blue, that means the two-in-one isn't quite ready yet and it's going to dry tacky. I'm waiting. <laughs> and of course, on top of all of those, you can always use your transfer gel. This is great for going through like stencils and doing foiling that way. And I love the look of that. And I was planning on doing some of that too, but it's already 6.30, meaning I've already been on here for an hour. Unless you guys want me to do um, one or two panels like that, although we may not have time to get them done. Um, I'm only saying that because it does take a little bit of time to dry. Y'all want me to do some with the um, deco foil, the transfer gel rather, if I can get to my stencils. Bethany says she loves using deco foil gel for stencils. Absolutely. Okay, I'm going to try not to lose anything. Yeah. Okay, so I've got a stencil book out. Donna says, yes, please. <laughs> so they had, um, Decafoil had two different types of gel. Okay, so this one in this container is the original transfer gel. And then they came out with the transfer gel duo. Now the transfer gel was one that you just like the, both of them are ones, you put them through your stencil, you can use them in other ways, all of that. And then you wait for them to dry. And then with the Decafoil, it was like with the embossing where you have to put it through a laminator to heat it up. The Decafoil Duo, you don't have to add heat because it stays tacky like the two-in-one pen. So, let's see, what do I have here? And I've got a couple of new stencils that I can't share yet because, yeah, they're not actually available yet to be used. So anyhow, I love the hearts from Simon Hurley. I do that a lot. But I also need to think about what can I do that I'm going to actually use for a card now. So I'm going with Halloween. <laughs> it's gonna be either Halloween or Christmas, right? And um, that would be kind of neat. So how about if we go on black and then I can use some gold foil on top. That would be kind of cool. So I am going to tape this down to my card. If I can remember where I have I have too much stuff out on my desk again. I tried to be organized this time. It didn't really work. Where did I put my tape? So I'll use one of my backup tapes.
Ooh, spooky, scary skeletons. I'm going to start off with these. And then I have my ghosts. Okay, the new stencils, you only have to wait two weeks, I think. Ooh, Elizabeth says that her desk is clean even after your live. Are you talking about last night's live or did you do another one today that I missed again? I am really trying to catch all of your, I'm looking at my, yeah, I'm looking at the wrong thing. I'm really trying to catch all of your lives and be there with you, hun. And yeah, it doesn't always work. Last night's. Okay. So even if, I don't know how you do it. I know what it is. You clean it up because you have to in order to be able to do anything more. Okay. So get enough stuff out of the way so it doesn't, I really like the way that those turned out though. I need to do more of the stamping ones. Because that just means, okay, we all, how about this? I don't know if you do this like I do this, but I tend to get gravitate to some type of product. And for a long time, it was stamps, lots and lots of stamps. And then I wasn't doing any foiling. And now I'm getting all of these foil plates and I absolutely love them. Um, but then, you know, you kind of, it's like, okay, I got all the foil plates and I need to use those, but I've got all these stamps and I really like to have the foil plate like the stamps and I don't have it, but you can use your stamps and you can foil them. And it's one of those things that we never actually think about. So let's get out what actually worked. Those were good. Yes, I'm clean. That was weird. I know this will come up. This is one of those Ranger, um, Brenda Cotrain. hello, Brenda. So this is one of those, yeah, my foil stuck to it. I don't know what's going on with that. Anyhow, I told you I got too much stuff on my desk now and I'm trying to get enough of it out of the way so I can see what I'm doing and moving stuff out of the way. So I've got some things that foil and some things that I need to foil later. I've got stuff that could be considered waste that I'm not going to throw away that needs to go in my little folder for that. I am not organized, guys. I am so sorry. I was. I was organized. And then I took all the things out, and now I'm disorganized again. Okay. That over there tape out of the way that over there so these are the things that we foiled so far okay now I'm kind of sort of organized the problem was I was putting all the stuff I had already foiled in with the stuff that I hadn't foiled and it's like now I can't find what I need To put it away and then my OCD kicks in and it gets mad okay that's what I need and I grab one of these I got this from Dollar Tree I've got another one I think from scrapbook.com but you can use whatever kind of a scraper that you want and they're, they're all gonna work and I think I am going to use the duo because I know that's what you guys are going to have access to if it's over here. If it's not over here, then I am going to, yes. So here is my regular transfer gel, the original, and then this one is the duo. It says on the top, new formula, dries clear, stays tacky. They no longer offer the normal one. So I've got two jars of this that I need to use up, which is one reason why I use it more often. But you can do the exact same thing with the duo except you don't have to run it through your laminator okay and it's just like any other foiling with a paste I mean stenciling with a paste words are hard I'm trying to do it fairly 
fairly thin but not too thin because you see i've got a couple of places here that are, i want it to be a little bit i want it to be actually covering it i don't want you to see the black underneath okay Uh, there's a place over there that needs some paste there yeah bethany words are always hard have to admit they've been getting better but i think that's because i'm talking a lot more than i was as you guys know i was having breathing issues a couple years back and you guys have been the ones that have really helped me to get past that because now that my breathing's better it's kind of where I forgot how to talk in the meantime. Okay. So now I'm going to just take off my stencil. And we're going to let this sit to the side to dry. And looks like I've got a little bit of a mess up there. But it's Halloween. Halloween, it doesn't matter if you mess up. Okay. And I usually have something that I can put it to the side. Otherwise, yeah, my desk would be covered and I wouldn't be able to play with things. And I need to, this really needs to go in the, again, I need a bin of water. Hold on, guys. I am going to have to run and get a bin for this because, yeah. Anyhow, where is my screen? Did I not put it up there? Nope, and I don't know if I've got the I'll be right back screen working or not. Okay, I'm assuming you can hear me now. <laughs> so I got a bin and I took out a few stencils that I'm going to try out. I did this one somewhat recently with some paste, which is Simon Hurley's Ghosted. And Miss Elizabeth was talking about... Um, da -da -da -da. Brenda says, Melissa, can you use any foil mitt for hot foiling with the mink? Yes. Um, the thing is, hot foiling, 
and I'm sure that Melissa is going to mention this too, hot foiling foil usually costs more than regular foil because it's got the adhesive built in. So you may not want to use it when you are doing your foiling on toner or adhesives, any other kind of adhesive, but that is entirely up to you. Okay, so um, Elizabeth has said something about skellies. So this, this is one I think she was talking about because I did this last year. So I'm going to do that on some black and probably use some green foil for it because it is awesome. And then here is a, a, this is one that I have never used from Whimsy Stamps with is Halloween Creatures. I think I got this last year um, when it was on um, like on clearance or something or on sale like after the holiday. So I'm going to try that one out. And then I've got this one that I cut out with my scanning cut based on a design by um, Kathy Zilski. So if you got the same kind of thing, I don't know if the sizing is the same or anything else, but it's kind of where I use her, her idea and a piece of this just came off. Okay. Anyway, I used one of her designs and created one of my own that's only for personal use. It's not like I'm going to, I'm not going to sell that design to anyone. So let's see, what do I want to start with? So I've got my green and I'm thinking, thinking I want the group, the these guys in green to go on a different color of cardstock. So I decided I wanted to do black with the ghosts. So I've got that one. And if I do the bats or the spiders, ooh, I think I want to do these, these bats that are at the bottom. That would be really cool. And I think I'll go with, it needs to be on black. I need another piece of black. I'll go with black for, for the skellies for Miss Elizabeth. And yeah, I sent her, I think I sent you a card or a panel or something with those last year, didn't I? I think that's what I did. So let's go ahead and tape it on like I did the other, just so that it doesn't move. And yes, I have my, um, whatchamacallit, my Make Art Station situated over here kind of under things so i'm not pulling it out but that's the reason i'm not pulling it out i am trying to do better than last year by actually using a scraper i to do okay tape's going away um to do this instead of trying to fight with all of the holes using a spatula like this like a little palette knife because what I found I was doing more of is getting it more so underneath than what I wanted. Kind of like what I did with that one on that, that other um, stencil. Because it will go under it if you, if you mess with it too much. Okay, so let's see how that one turned out. That looks kind of cool. So I'm going to set that one to the side to dry. And I may not have time for, it may not have time to dry before um, we finish up tonight, but you never know. Put that in my little bin of water. Okay, now we're going to play with some little ghosts. Do the same thing. Yes, toner foil is definitely the lesser expensive way to learn foiling. And that's one reason why I wanted to share this. I mean, I love my Glimmer and it does, you do get really good results. Um, part of that is the whole letterpress look. It's where the foil is kind of imprinted into your um, card when you do it using that. So I absolutely love that. But the way that I learned how to foil initially was just printing something and giving it a try. Because when you print with a laser printer, it usually works if you're able to get enough toner on there. If you don't have a laser printer, you know what? You can probably get the stuff printed out at the library. 
or at Kinko's or one of the other places, just make sure that they have, you know, you know, maybe find out from them if it if it prints dark or not, because if it doesn't print dark, it's kind of just wasting your time and money. But they don't really charge that much for per page. I'm just going from from what I remember from what I used to when I had children have to have things printed at you know at the library because that was where you could get stuff printed okay I am getting this stuff all over my desk I don't like doing that but you know what it's gonna be okay deep breath deep breath <laughs> okay so let's take the little ghosties off that one turned out pretty good I wonder if sitting that over on my laminator, since my laminator is hot, will make it, you know, dry faster. Who knows? I also needed more space to put stuff because my laminator is taking up space. I did have my water bottle. Where's my water bottle? Okay, people have been coming over here and stealing things. Okay, I'll use alcohol instead because my little water bottle isn't where it's supposed to be. I probably moved it off of my desk because I was cleaning things. Okay. And this stuff is, it is tacky, so it's already kind of trying to stick to my hands. Yeah. Okay, so now I've got the spider. I mean, no, I could do the spiders or I could do the bats. I think I want to do the little bats because that would be kind of a cool edge for this. So let's add some tape and tape that onto my panel. Bethany says, I invested in a cheapo laser printer. Totally worth it. Haven't found my favorite, favorite paper for it yet. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, Miss Teresa. Um, I have a brother, based on recommendations from a lot of people, I was researching to see what to use. So I got a brother printer, but for some reason, it does not work the way it should. Um, I don't know what the deal is with it, but it just, I haven't been able to get it to print dark like it's supposed to. Um, the toner is pretty much full. Um, I've readjusted all of the settings, like 1200 DPI and the, um, and making sure it's not in econo mode, all of those different things, because I've researched how to get this to actually work right. And I redo, it looks like it did do a little bit better, but it's still not where it's supposed to be. And I don't really know the reason why for that. So I have a feeling that it's actually a problem with my machine. However, I've had it long enough. I seriously doubt that brother is going to do anything to help me. But I think my next step is going to be contacting them. Say, okay, good dudes, I've had this. I, I need to look up and see exactly how long I've had. It. I've had it for such and such amount of time. I have never been able to get it to, um, to actually do dark enough printing because the reason I bought it was I wanted to do toner foiling and that sort of thing and see what they say. I mean, I, it, it doesn't hurt to ask. It just may make me mad. <laughs> well, that's how I started it at the um, 600, but then I saw someone posted that you get better results with 1200 DPI. And I'll be honest, I did do um, the page that I did the foiling from today was actually using the 1200 dpi so it did do better but so i accidentally got a little bit of the toner uh, the foil gel on the wrong side that i didn't want so i try scraping that up and we'll see how it does if i have wind up with a little bit of foil there i should be able to remove it with my sand eraser but these little bats should look pretty cool so set that one off to the side. And did I have any others that I wanted to do? Oh, yeah, I wanted to do one with this. So this one is just going to be kind of generic. It's not going to be anything Halloween like everything else is Halloween. And I'm not going to bother with, well, I should probably tape it. If it shifts, it's going to move that foiled, um, 
foil gel off to the side and that won't be fun. And hopefully at least one of these will have dried enough to do something. Uh, they still look pretty white though. So I don't know that they're going to be dry enough for us to do any actual foiling with tonight. Okay. And I think doing it this way, I am always afraid of using too much of something because I'm cheap and supplies cost money and yeah, I don't have the money to replace it all. So I wind up trying to not to use much and that's one reason why I don't always get as good of results. So sometimes you have to make sure you're putting enough down. It's kind of like if you're, if you're frosting a cake, if you try to just put a little bit of the frosting, you're going to wind up scraping up all the cake and not actually get any frosting down. So you have to put enough on there for it to actually work. Um, it's doing much better. Um, let me show you guys this. I'm not going to show you the scar yet because yeah, it's not showing there yet, but I'm down to just the one bandage now. So it's basically from about here, and that's actually numb, all the way down. And the part that won't, yeah, maybe now you can hear me. The part that is still um, not as healed is like right down here at the end. So it's much better, but it's like, it's like a gash like that long. And it was like the, the end of it is the part that needed to be stitched together. And then they had to remove the stitches because my body was rejecting it. And I wound up on three le levels of antibiotics and yeah, or three rounds of antibiotics. And the last time I went to the doctor, this was at the urgent care. There's like right across this, right down the street from us. It's like, it's closer to me than my grocery store. Let's put it that way. Anyway, um, he was concerned enough because he didn't see the healing as fast as he expected he thought it should be he was wanting me to go to a um a surgeon a general surgeon it's like uh okay and about that time was when um todd and i realized actually todd realized that oh yeah i've been taking pain meds just because it's like okay i'm taking a leave i'm taking um advil just because and it wasn't because it was hurting it's just because i thought i was supposed to be taking it so um that might be what was causing it to take so friggin long for me to heal. So that's just a kind of a reminder for everybody, because I didn't know this, that if you have an injury, uh, for that matter, if you don't need the meds for, for pain because it doesn't actually really hurt, you kind of need to not take the pain meds. Dummy me, come on, I didn't need to put that in the the water bin. I just put my paper towel in the water bin. So while I'm still waiting on those to do a little bit more drying, I'm just adding some things to this little bin to try to, you can kind of see the water is kind of gunky and that is all this stuff. Okay, so got that out of the way. So hopefully I will not have ruined any of my stencils. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and go back one more time, put a paper towel up here so I don't get anything else. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Ellen, if you have got, if you've got a design that you like and you want to give it a try, I would say absolutely give that one a shot. I would want, to, I would say you might want to make sure how well their toner is first, like maybe ask them. I have no idea. I've never done it that way, but I'm thinking it shouldn't be a big deal. You can maybe get them to say, to let you see how well their printing does, because if it's not dark enough, it ain't going to work. So this was the one that I did as a trial run because I knew that my printer kind of sucked. <laughs> and this is from my printable it's over in the discord i put a link and i think i still have that one that i can put in here yes okay that's awesome it's great when copy and paste actually still works so there's a link to the discord if you want to join us over there um, but i went ahead and added the printable over there for you guys so you know you can use it for whatever you want to it's a foilable so it's in black and white and this i made like a 2020 
So it's been a couple of years and I haven't actually done a whole lot with it. Anyway, it's got a couple of sentiments and the sentiment came out and this is with bad printing. You can tell this is gray. This is not black. Did not print as well as I would have liked, but the toner still stuck to it. So here it is the Merry Christmas that I foiled in gold. And then I cut out the Happy Holidays and did that one in silver. And that one looks super pretty. And then I had a couple of backgrounds that I was in with the same one. I basically took this image, shrunk it down, and turned it into a pattern. So it's got really, really fine lines for my little flamingo. But did this one all in gold. I also include in that little, um, in that free digi is the opposite, which is all black with little white flamingos. And that one didn't turn out as well because the black didn't print as, as dark as it needed to. Also, the lines are, again, super, super fine. But I can still use this for something. I may just want to do like die cuts or something with that. Actually, I think it might be kind of cool to do these two patterns together and kind of have them lined up. But that would be kind of cool. So that was that. And then we did a couple of toner foiled, uh, toner printed foiling. This is from Crafty Krita. So a couple of their foilables. And when I send it through my laminator, I think I got a wrinkle. So there are some places that did not foil as well as I would like, but they still turned out really pretty. So there's those. Then we did um, stamping and embossing with clear embossing powder. And got these guys to foil up because all you really oh and i just noticed that my zid two-way glue pen is dry now so i can add some foil to that one now i just need to find a scrap of foil hello miss dawn i think i'm gonna do my high in red mostly because this just happens to be there so i'm just gonna rub that on there And my writing is crappy, but it still turned out pretty cool. Then with these, these are all from Tape Runners. So I've got this one, which is my dot lighter. That's this one in the middle that turned out really cool with the, it's got a really close knit small dot for adhesive. And this I use on cards. And then this one for the blue was from scrapbook.com. And then this one with the purple, I don't know where it's from the little hearts um, it was special edition 15th anniversary and I don't remember what the name of the company was but this is something that was given to me at creativation so there's all of those uh, what else did we do oh yes we did double-sided adhesive tape so we did some tapes and this is the stuff that you hold together your cards and stuff with right especially like when you've got your um interactive cards you want to make sure everything sticks so i just use some of those and that works great to hold foil oh also the little dots there we're using a quickie glue pen but you can get these things anywhere so that's another way of doing foil and then we use some double-sided adhesive sheets which the sides are still kind of tacky so i need to trim this one down but i made my own foil cardstock so that is also super cool and then the last method that we were using, and I might be able to do the bats. Not sure. Because they were so small, they might be drying faster. Uh, let's take a look at these, though. This is using Deco Foil Duo, Transfer Gel Duo. So this is the first one we did. You can see there's still quite a bit of the white left, which means I can't do it. This I've had this guy over here with the with Simon Hurley's ghosts sitting on my laminator. So there are parts of it that have dried pretty decently quick. I'm going to turn it and see if that helps any. This one too. The center part is what's actually touching the laminator. So I'm going to turn this way. See if I can get it to, to dry any faster. And then we've got the bats, which I can't tell. These might be almost ready to go. I'm going to give that a couple more minutes though i think because i don't really want to waste that it looks i'm thinking that one is going to be so 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 pretty okay yeah and i might as well use the the tape on this to maybe be able to tape it down a little bit so it'll that's not working anyway Anyway, they're not quite dry yet, so you have to wait until it dries clear before you can use these, before you can do them.
I'm going to say that this one's close enough. Because the pieces are so small, the bats are so small, I think that is pretty much done. So we've got... I really am going to have to clean my glass mat. So we've got light purple cardstock with our little bats. And you can kind of see them there. What color foil do you guys think I should use on that? I do still have some dark purple. I think the dark purple would probably be cool. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to test it on one of the little ones off to the side because I can always tr trim down the edges. Hello, Miss Sherry D. Let's see if this is... Looks like it's close enough. Okay, let's do a little bit more. Okay, and going some more on here. And anytime you're doing foil with this kind of a technique, you may not get perfect results. I do see that there are some places where the foil is not, didn't stick on my little bats, but I still think this is cool. This is lovely. Okay, and that is a bat there. So let me add a little bit more there. So this is using Deco Foil Transfer Gel Duo. Now, if I want, I could always put, put this over and run it through my laminator, and that would add both pressure and heat, because the way it is right now, because it's tacky, it's just using the pressure to be able to um, adhere with. Okay, and I put that over. You see it did pull up some here. I put that back on there because there were some places that really didn't cover all that well. Or rather, there were little dots. Okay, it's my OCD. I was getting a little finicky with it and getting irritated because it didn't do all of it. But I think this looks cool. Okay. So... I think that is going to be it because it's going to still take a while for these other ones to dry. But I think this turned out really, really cool. What do you guys think? And uh, what I would love for you guys to let me know in the chat and down in the comments is what is what technique have you seen tonight that maybe you've seen before, you may have tried before, but you haven't used it in a while. Which one do, are you going to try next? on your own cards like whether or not you have been doing foiling for 10 20 years or you've never done it at all which technique that you saw tonight that does not require a hot foil system are you going to try i would love to know about that cordelia loves it and everybody's saying hi and hi and hi i don't remember if i said hello to miss sherry d or not but hello miss sherry d <laughs> And forgive me for the yawning. Oh, goodness. I'm also planning on... You guys really got me thinking, and I've been wanting to do some classes, and you guys know it. So what I think I'm going to be doing as one of my next big projects is starting to work on a couple of... Not necessarily just classes, but kind of class systems tr tr uh, i mean if you were going to college it would be more like a course track and that's kind of the structure of it but kind of a lot of different ways to do the same kind of thing and give you opportunities to see different ways of doing something so let's say a class on using the deco foil gel where you'd be using it and showing what you're doing and learning more about it and answering questions all the kind of things anyway having different classes for different things doing different projects with each one but i'm planning on doing like a group of classes on foil um at least i think that's one of the ones i want to start off with but i've got a couple of other ideas so if you are interested in any classes like that send me an email or let me know over in discord or even just leave me a note down in the chat over here 
all of those things are good, but let me know what you're interested in learning more about. And I can put that on my list of ideas that I'm, I'm working on. Um, you guys know, I at least if you've been watching the, for a lot, the last while, you know that I've been trying to work ahead so I can get some of these ideas that have been brewing in my head out of my head and actually to fruition. And something comes up every time. It's like, it's like, I think I'm caught up and then something happens. Like we went to Ohio because of Todd's dad and his cancer thing going on. We need to spend a week up there. So that meant no time in the craft room. And then we come back and I get caught up again. And then I drop my bike and mess up my arm and it's taken forever to heal. And the antibiotics and the, my body healing just gave me such bad fatigue that I fell way behind again. And now I'm finally cross my fingers. I'm finally caught back up to a point where I can start again working towards what I want to get done for you guys going forward. But one way to help me stay focused and narrow down the million ideas in my head is if you guys let me know what you're most interested in. So that would be dope. That would be awesome. Okay, so Cordelia's okay, going back up. Cordelia says, I've tried all of those. Yes, awesome. Hi, Sherry D. <laughs> um, Bethany says, Deco foil. Actually, I have a toner foil video to film sometime this week. Awesome. Already printed up on my desk. And Dawn says that she would love to try the two-way glue. Absolutely. Cordelia says, I haven't used the adhesive in quite a while, though. Double-sided tape. And Cordelia says, that's okay, Debbie J. We're still here. <laughs> okay, looking to see if any of these are about ready. This one looks like it's almost ready to go. And my ghosts are still, they still look ghosty. So they're still not ready. Okay, and Bethany says, oh, by the way, a day before his first birthday, Franklin officially walking five steps today. Did you video it? And are you sharing it over on Discord? I want to see it. That would be awesome. That is too fun. Of course, now you're going to have another child to try to keep up with when they start running all over the house. Yeah. Cordelia says, you go, Franklin. And Cordelia says, he's such a cutie. <laughs> Absolutely. The only downside to the little baby starting walking is that they get, they get into everything. And I don't know how you did it, honey. I really don't. You got three of them. I, I don't know how you did it. It was hard enough for me dealing with my stepkids. I had a, when... I married my first husband. I had a five-year-old and a two-year-old, and they, they were a handful. <laughs> Let's just put it that way, just having two. Anyway. Oh, you were nowhere near a phone did video I'm trying to get him to do it again all day. <laughs> he will. As soon as you get it, though, as soon as you video it, you got to share it with us. We would love, love, love to see that. Yeah. Wow. Ellen says the, her phone is three minutes behind the computer on your live. So um, that is really, really weird. I don't know why you've got that kind of a delay on your phone. That does not make sense. <coughs> okay, I'm going to say that this one is pretty close. And for this one, I think I'm going to use, I think I'm going to go with some rainbow. And this one is from Blue Bonnet. And I, I'm, I will, after this, I will be sure to link, <coughs> sorry, um, link down below the different places that I got my foil from. I don't think I'm an affiliate for either one. I don't think that Blue Bonnet ever added me as an affiliate, but um, I will leave a link down below for Crafty Critta and for Blue Bonnet. One of the positives for Blue Bonnet is that she is in Texas, so that means you'll be able to get your stuff probably quicker. And of course, I didn't cut it long enough. <coughs> Sorry. Um, 
Her foil is much thinner than the Crafty Krita though. So if you're used to using Crafty Krita, you will probably, you will definitely notice a difference. Uh, same kind of thing with, um, I think Deco foil is a little, is thicker than the generic stuff that I use a lot of, but it's thinner than the Crafty Krita. And that's because Crafty Krita, Crafty Krita, theirs is a textile foil that is made to use like on fabrics and stuff. Oh yeah, I absolutely love Blue Bonnet and she is such a, such a sweetheart. So this time what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to go ahead and run this through my laminator too. Just to show you a little bit of the difference of, of the results. Now I just put this down and when I accidentally pulled a little bit of it up, there are some, some bits that didn't get picked up. So I'm thinking that if I run it through my laminator, it should wind up with a smoother finish because that's what has happened in the past. And my laminator has been sitting over here running the whole time. So, you know, it's been on for like an hour and a half. So it should be nice and nice and hot. Oh, and the, my little, my pumpkins are almost done too. So I'm going to put that on my laminator to hopefully get that to heat up a little bit more. And I'm just waiting for it to go through my laminator. I would have the laminator out here, but I got too much other stuff on my desk again. Okay. Okay, so now because of the pressure of the laminator, you can see that, which also means you could use this and run it through. If you're using the Duo, the Deco Foil Duo, you can use your embossing, uh, I'm sorry, your die cutting machine to add pressure. And you'll probably get better results than when I was just burnishing it with my hands and it would be smoother results. Okay, and this time, it came out perfect because we added the pressure and the heat instead of me just trying to do the burnishing with my hands. So this one turned out awesome. And this, I mean, you could trim it down with a little bit of a border around it and put a sentiment on it. And it's basically, you're done. That card is done. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty rainbow foil. Okay. Do we want to, do we want to take a chance on this one? I mean, there are some places that aren't quite dry, but you know, I think I'm ready to give it a shot. And let's see, what color foil do I want to use on that? This one is some blue bonnet and he, we have some gold with little stars in it. I think that would be pretty. Let's see which way I need to go. And you guys can't really see it, but my air conditioning is definitely blowing down on me again. And it does that whenever it thinks that it's below 74 degrees, which means sometimes I'm freezing and sometimes I'm not. And that's because of where the thermostat is. Okay. This is some really pretty foil too. Dang it. Don't do that. <laughs> I dropped it with the, the plastic side, not the foil side down on top of it. And that did not work. So I'm going to just cover that, trim off the excess and then run it through my laminator. And hopefully that will make it so that I don't have any kind of weird looking places on there. It is what it is. Okay. And I'm also going to put the skulls on the laminator because I do think my laminator, because it's hot, is, is definitely helping. I love this. Anyhow. <laughs> okay. I'm going to bring that one back over because I kind of did it and then got it out of the way because I wanted to do the other thing. So where did I put it? just had the darn thing. There it is. It's hiding. So this is the one that I just did with the rainbow. 
But yeah, I think that turned out pretty good. And I put the paper towel down so that I wouldn't be getting everything else stuck in the glue. So of course the paper towel is now stuck in the glue. I definitely need to clean my desk. Okay. I think it's good. So what do you think of that, guys? And this is where I didn't think it was fully dried yet. But look at that. Let me see if I can get a shine. There we go. Now it's shiny. And this is the part that it kind of doesn't look right right. But if I put if I put something, a focal image here, that is a perfect background. And like I was show, I think I showed on a video recently where I used a hot foil plate on some pattern paper. You could do the same kind of thing with this on some pattern paper. Add foiling with any of your stamps, any of your stencils. It would be awesome. That's another way that I've done with stamps. I've used this, pounced on to, you know, pouncing it onto a stamp and then stamping down with that instead of using the embossing. And then you just have to make sure to clean your stamps really well because this, I'm thinking that could cause a problem with your stamps. But that's another way to do foiling without a hot foil machine. <coughs> okay, so now I'm going to go with the ghost, which is, again, it's still kind of cloudy in a few areas, but I'm going to do it anyway. What color ghosties do we want? I've got this one that is the silver with those little stars. Another one from Blue Bonnet. I could do that. Do we want to do that? <coughs> okay, I have to have a cough drop. Sorry. So everybody is saying, ooh, love that. Awesome. Cordelia says yes, so I think she says yes to the silver. Okay, so I have two layers of silver here. Why do I have two layers of silver? Uh, because one of them ripped. That would make sense. That's why I had to, because I cut one off and then put it back because I didn't want to waste it. Okay. So about there, let me go ahead and cut that. Jim never. Well, hello, Mr. Jim. You almost missed us because I was supposed to stop like a half hour ago. But you know what? When you start foiling, it is so hard to stop. It doesn't matter if you're doing it with a hot foil machine or just with your adhesives or what you're using. You can't stop. Okay, so we're going to do some silver stars. I don't remember the name of it, but if she still has it, I will let you guys know. Um, I will be adding that on there, so be sure to check back. I would say tomorrow because sometimes sometimes YouTube is finicky and won't let you really change things same day okay so I'm gonna run that one through my Cronova laminator looks like the one that I'm not gonna be able to do I'm sorry Elizabeth is this one I can't do it tonight because it is really not it's really not good hello Miss Kim just sneaking in while at work. Well, then I am so glad that I stayed on longer. <laughs> okay, so Dawn says she is at home. She is going to do a live right after us. So question for you, Miss Dawn, is do you already have it set up and scheduled so that I can hook up my, um, my live to go over to yours? Um, right after we get done because if you do I'm more than happy to do a redirect if not then we could just leave a link to your channel down in the the comments and such and down in the description for the folks catching the replay so I'm running it through a second time just because that's me <laughs> I don't I never feel that there's a problem with doing it the second time just to be on the safe side you know what I mean
Okay, Don says, don't worry. Um, they just want to let you, and that's fine. I just want to know whether or not to set this up to be going to you live once you are all set up. So let me see, grab my mouse pad. Yeah, I even had to take my mouse off my desk because I didn't have enough room. So let me see what YouTube has to say and see if it's listed there. It may not be. Um, I know we are still kind of getting the hang of how all of the stuff works for the, um, oh, it is there. Um, I think you titled it Fall Play. So I'm going to go ahead and set that one up. It says that you're supposed to be starting, well, that you're already, um, you're scheduled for now, but I think that means you're just going to start it live once we get done. So I'm going to go ahead and save this on here. And that means that when we get done with this live, we're going to raid her channel and head on over there and see what's going on with her. Okay, who's ready for some silver ghosties? Okay. I'm thinking too bad Simon's not in the chat, right? <laughs> for a minute, I'm like, why are they saying me, me, me? It's because I said, who's ready for some ghosties? I mean, look at that. There are some places where it didn't, that it kind of smooshed through around the stencil, but oh my God, this is adorable. Ooh, I, I love foil. I'm sorry. I'm going to... Did not fall on the floor. Good. I am going to try. Don't know if it's going to work. I'm going to try to dry this stuff so that I can do these, these skulls. Because I think one of my favorite panels last year was the one that I sent off to Elizabeth. I don't remember if I made a card with it or if I just sent her the panel. But that was using this stencil, which was the skull and crossbones, and some... Um... Somebody was saying, bring it close to the camera. <laughs> I'm not going to give you a cold. I don't have a cold. This is allergies. Okay, I am noticing that putting um, heat to this is kind of making the um, deco foil kind of bubble a little bit. But it does look like it's starting to dry it a little bit more. Do we want to go ahead and give this one a shot? What do you think? I mean, if it doesn't work, I can just redo and, and do another one later, right? <laughs> Dawn says, don't give me allergies. <laughs> I, you're not allergic to me. Okay, I know I've got some green around here somewhere. I have some green. Why are we doing green? Because that is Elizabeth's favorite color. And I'm looking to see, yeah, that should be enough. I think this will be enough to cover that. Hoping. Okay, it's just enough to cover that. And then I'm going to run it through my laminator real quick. Now I have a big old humongous mess to clean up. <laughs> yeah, where is Elizabeth? She was here earlier. She was the one that said that she wanted skulls. But then again, I kind of wind up having to, I think she was on her phone, so she may not be, she wasn't able to see the chat really well, so. I mean, there's a lot of times that I'm kind of lurking in the background, not just on our lives and stuff over here, but like even over um, with some folks over on Twitch is where I don't, I really can't comment on everything. <clears throat> so I'm kind of lurking in the background a lot lately because I got, I'm trying to get so much other stuff done. I'm almost caught up. I'm so excited. And I really, really, really hope that I can get some of the things that I've got planned done in a decent time frame. So let's just pray I don't hurt myself again, right? On on that front, um, Todd rode my bike to go get rode my road bike. No, rode my my regular bike, my road bike, up to the mailbox because it is it's like round trip. It's a quarter mile. Anyway, he rode up to the mailbox on my bike. 
Not sure exactly why he did that, but he did um, to get the mail. And then he comes back. Oh, I know what it was. He's been working and, and doing some customizing on his bike, like fiberglass and all, all the things. Anyhow, um, carbon fiber. But he's been working on his, so he rode mine up to the mailbox, I don't know, about a week or so ago, and realized that the steering on mine was not nearly as tight as what he thought it was. So he decided that, you know what, it might be better if I ride my mountain bike because the steering is different. It's a lot tighter. It's kind of like um, when he thought that I was having issues driving because whenever he watched me drive my Cavalier, he would see that my hands kind of went, yeah, you know, moving a little bit and I'm going straight. And then he drove it and it's like, oh, <laughs> the steering's not tight. It's kind of like the difference between my car, my, my Miata, which has really tight steering, and his van. I hate, I, it's, I, I hate driving the van these days. Anyway, because of that, he thinks it's better for me to ride my mountain bike. So day before yesterday was the first time I've been on my mountain bike in two years but that's the plan right now. It's like, I need to get the legs moving. I need to get the exercising again. I need to get my legs stronger. Um, we realized that basically my entire body has wound up hurting after doing, I only did two miles. I, I did like four laps uh, around my around my neighborhood. I only did like two miles and my legs were hurting yesterday. Anyway, this is what that green one turned out like and I'm loving it. So here's a couple of other ideas, guys. You can use this stuff and just kind of grunge up the edges, let it dry, and then put some foil on it. So you could do that kind of just as like the framing around your cards. You, I mean, there's so many different ways that you can do that. You can do the same thing, add an accent and just use some tape with some foil and you've got a perfect like gold or silver or red, or whatever accent. So let's go ahead and pull these out one more time since it's been, this is a longer live than what I was planning on doing, but you know what? When you're playing with foil, it's kind of hard to stop. We started off with some really crappy printed things that I did on my printer because my printer does not want to print right, but um, this is kind of what the gray, <laughs> the gray black toner foil looks like, but they turned out pretty good. I've got a couple of pretty sentiments. They foiled up nicely. I did a couple of backgrounds using my little flamingos that I had. This is a printable that I made that is available over in my Discord. There is a Discord link in the chat somewhere and I'm gonna add another one here too in case y'all are interested in it. And it basically, if you're on Discord and you're a member on my Discord channel, it's down in one of the new, actually I put an announcement in there so you can find where it is. I put a new section that's called freebies and, and discounts so that we can start adding some of those because how many times do you lose them? Anyway, um, but that's on there. So if you're interested, you can download it. Um, no cost or anything. And I used this flamingo set. This was a couple of years ago I made this, but I made this image and then I turned it into a couple of backgrounds. And the first one that I foiled up tonight was this one. And it's basically a black background with those little flamingos in it. And it didn't do as well, but that's because the toner sucked. This one turned out much, much prettier. And I think I can actually still use both of those together. That's gonna to be awesome using that. So we did toner foiling. Um, I did do where you can do purchased toner foil. You know, yeah, these are both from Crafty Krita and use some Crafty Krita foil on those and they turned out really nice. So that's a couple of cards. Bethany remembered something, yay. <laughs> this one I used some strips of double-sided adhesive tape different sizes on that and made a bunch of stripes. Then I got out my embossing stamps and, oh wait, take that back. Then I did a double-sided adhesive sheet and a couple different scraps of foil. Then I got out my embossing powder. So I just used some clear embossing powder and a stamp, embossed a couple of images, embossed up these little pumpkins and then foil those up. One thing I will, I will go ahead and say this, the image that I used 
was this one, which has got a lot of little details in there that are not visible on here anymore. And that's because when you when I had what you do with this is you run it through your laminator to heat up that embossing. The embossing is going to melt and that kind of squeezes out and goes out into all of those lines. So if you've got something detailed like that, the detail is not going to show. But I think that that still turned out really cool and it's given me those images of the pumpkins. But if you try this and it doesn't work, because it's too detailed of a stamp that's exactly why i picked this stamp because it was mostly solid because i wanted a mostly solid image if i used say one of these these lines are big enough that the bigger lines are going to show very well but the little fine lines you're going to have a little bit of an issue with because there's just not going to be enough for it to stick to but i'd say go ahead and give it a try you never know it until you try and experimentation is half of everything right then we use some dot liner adhesive. So I've got my, I don't remember where I put it. Anyway, um, I've got my Kokio dot liner that I used that was this one. It's got some really small little dots in that dot liner. We've got a scrapbook.com dot liner. And this is one from another company that I don't remember what it was because they gave me this one. It just as we were leaving creativation they said hey you want this i said okay sure i used my zig two-way um, glue pen to write out high and then foiled it up in red after we finished foiling it and then these little dots were done using the quickie glue pen so basically anything that you can use that is going to leave it tacky is going to work Another thing I did not do because we didn't have the time tonight is alcohol inks. If you do alcohol inks on Yupo, a lot of times part of it's going to dry tacky and you can add a little bit of foil to it to give it kind of that little marbly look that would look, that looks so awesome. And then we started playing with deco foil transfer gel and some stencils and got a few of those and these are stenciling is one of my favorite ways to do this a lot of the other ways i really don't do that much but the one that i do the most is the stenciling because i mean look at that this just turned out super super awesome this one is using ghosted the stencil by simon hurley this one is a tim holtz st um, stencil this one i think is simply stories and i <laughs> love those jack-o-lantern faces um this one is from whimsy stamps this one is one that I cut out using my scan and cut and based on a design that I saw online from Kathy Zilski. Just love those dots. Anyway, that's just some of the ways that you can use. I know I do a lot of it using my hot foil system. I love my hot foil system. This is some ways that you can do it without one, depending on what you've got. So you use what you've got, right? anybody have any questions okay jim just said awesome says i do foil on my alcohol ink christmas ornaments and easter eggs that is fantastic that is something that i've been wanting to do i have not done alcohol ink on our ornaments yet but that sounds like it'd be fun especially since i got those i got some really really cheap alcohol inks from hobby lobby they were normally like four dollars a piece and they had them on sale for like 99 cents so i got a bunch of them so that was awesome and that's going to be something else i need to do some playing with i'm just glad that i had time to do some playing today anyhow um <coughs> anything else i'm looking at the chat anything else that you guys want to chat about real quick before we head over and see what don has in store for us so sherry is saying those are beautiful jim i i need to see that i i'm pretty sure i've seen pictures of them but i've had so much stuff go in my head that it's not front of mind right now so I am so sorry about that but if you want to share some pictures of those if you have them on your computer over on our discord that would be fantastic we do have sections for you guys to share all that kind of fun stuff Dawn says I love them all Dawn says I am too she's you're glad either she's wanting to do those um Okay, great. So he has posted pictures over there before. So I'm going to have to search through Elizabeth's um, Facebook group because I'm sure that they're over there somewhere. Okay. Hobby Lobby had 50, had 
Christmas, 50% off last week. I picked up more ornaments and I'm trying the plastic tags this year. Awesome. Well, I still, I bought so much stuff from um, Dollar Tree several years ago because I planned on doing all the things and then I run out of time. My problem, okay, I need you guys to figure out how you can give me more time. <laughs> because uh, I have all the ideas and I have all the things I want to do and then I run out of it. Oh, thank you, Dawn. Dawn says that she was glad I got a chance to play today. And I did try to go pretty quick and stuff as much in as possible, but we still went over two hours. So anyway, I am going to stop at this point and let you guys head on over to Dawn's live stream. We do have it set up to go and raid her channel. So when you get over there, be sure to type in the chat, hashtag DJCC raid. And I'm gonna type it in so that you guys can just do a copy and paste and put that in her chat. For one thing, it's gonna tell YouTube that, well, if everybody chats in her stream as soon as we go over there, YouTube's gonna know that you guys like her. But it is gonna help support her channel and that is what I'm wanting to do. Okay, let's add some hearts. Hey, Don, what is your favorite color, hon? Because I don't know. I think I'm just going to add some. It's not wanting to add my hearts. Why is it not wanting to add my Oh, there we go. I just added some sparkly hearts to that. So, to grab, the oh, she likes purple. <laughs> okay, I'll take off those and just add purple hearts. Okay, so I just added that down into the chat. So copy and paste that when you get over to her channel. Um, we're about to rain because I'm going to end my stream and the way that it works is it should direct you straight over there. A lot of times it adds a note up in the top of the chat just to let you know that that's what you guys are doing. So be sure to click on whatever it tells you to click on to go to her channel because sometimes it hasn't, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm going to go ahead and end the stream now. You guys have a wonderful night and... Remember, I, here I am talking to the camera and you guys can't even see me. Um, remember that if I can make it, you can too. Y'all have a great night and I will talk to you soon. Bye guys.